So, uh, we are doing a round table for Bartleby Snopes and um, we have three and four um, women flash writers. I was going to say three amazing writers and then myself, but I, I'm sorry Don't about that. that. That's really, that. she, she won't let me do that. So anyway, I think you know, uh, I think everyone knows Kathy Fish, mm -hmm. I think everyone knows Nancy Stolman, I think everyone knows Kona Morris and I'm Meg Tewitt or Tweet, whichever you like. <laughs> Tweety Bird. Tweety Bird. Um, so the first question from April Bradley is um, kind of our intro into Flash, how we all started Flash. What was the opening for, do you want to start Kathy? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wrote Flash um, quite naturally. I wrote short uh, just because I had to. I had four children, I was very busy, but I wanted to finish things. So uh, I just naturally evolved into a writer of stories no more than 1,500 or 1,000 words and got on uh, a, a site called Zotrope. And around that same time, they made their own ling for stories that were that length. And they said flash fiction. So I'm like, oh, I'm writing flash fiction. So that's what I started to write and kept writing. I never that's wrote, so cool never wrote that you long never stories. read anything before about Flash. It just came to you naturally. No, no, it was what I wrote because I sort of had to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to finish stories, so I wrote short stories. Really, it was very, very mm -hmm. cool. Well, I was the opposite, and Nancy and I have discussed this already, but um, we did a similar thing where we took really long stories. I was writing like 30 page stories because I was like, Reading, I was writing by myself and reading 20th century stuff and 19th century, and so I had these long, elaborate, completely non-honed in, you know, sentences, and they were like forests. <laughs> and when I got to the Tin House workshop, I had Dorothy Allison, and she was like, "What the fuck is this?" So I realized <laughs> I brought the worst thing that I could possibly bring to her. Um, I loved it, and then I just started to break it down. So out of that one story, I got six stories published as Flash. Wow. And from that's how I got into Flash. Plus, Sheila O'Connor, I found this Tokens of Grace, and I think she wrote it in the early 90s, that's what I'm guessing. And it's a novel of Flash, and it was the first time I'd ever seen anybody who could do one chapter in two pages, and um, it was brilliant. And so, and that's the great thing about Facebook. I reconnected with her and she does do Flash still, but she's doing children's stuff now, but mm -hmm. she was killer. What's her name again? Um, Sheila O'Connor. Sheila O'Connor. And it's called Tokens of Grace. I'll look for that. It's really good. And then, you, did you guys read Black Tickets? Yes. Jane Ann Phillips. Oh yeah. Shit. We published uh, stories out of that I, book. Jane yeah. Ann Phillips was in your, one of your- Yeah, um, volume two. Okay, yeah. yeah. She rocked. That was my favorite of all of her stuff. <laughs> Do it, Kathy. Do it. And I really I, lean in and make sure to project. It's so called now cough medicine. Nancy? Yeah, it is cough medicine. Yes. Yeah. So I was more like Meg. I was writing novels. Okay, um, maybe by the time I started writing flash fiction, I was, um, I'd, I'd written a couple practice novels and I took this flash fiction class in, in grad school and most of the class I cheated because I would take excerpts from my novel, put a different title on it and call it Flash. And it was okay, it worked sort of. Yeah, it worked okay. And now, of course, a thousand words is like, God, you're going Whoa. on and on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so I remember somewhere in the end of that semester, I actually started writing flash fiction that I was conceiving as flash fiction from the beginning rather than cannibalizing, which is what I've been doing. Um, and from that point on, um, as I was saying earlier, at the end of that semester, um, Leah, who was in our class, was like, we should put together a chapbook. We have good stuff here. And so we put together this, started putting together this chapbook. And then it was like, well, I know t 10 other friends who are writing Flash. Let's put them in the chapbook. And then let's, let's just have submissions for the chapbook. And then pretty soon the chapbook turned into an anthology and turned into Fast Forward Press. And so a lot of my practice writing Flash actually came from reading a ton of Flash and submissions and editing and starting to figure out why some stories were naturally working and, and starting to figure out why some stories, I couldn't necessarily explain it, but that <coughs> felt like a story and that just felt like a 
moment or something. So um, I became a better flash fiction writer, like with my fingers in the dirt, kind of. So. And how many anthologies did you guys do? We did six, I think, no, all together. Five, five anthologies, two single author books. Right. And one, one of them was a flash novel. And one if was you a flash haven't heard novel about them, and they like, rock. We were you gotta awesome. get them. We rolled They're them amazing, for the next thing. amazing. I love the one that starts with a thousand words and goes yeah. down to mm -hmm. six That's word story. Incredible shrinking story. story yeah. And it starts with <laughs> Rob Geisen. So so oh, nice. The yeah. night I discovered I'm not as cool as Han Solo. Mm -hmm. And it ends with uh, Michael Flat six word story. One of my favorite, you probably my favorite six word you story. You remember that, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm going to tell you. Uh, my favorite six word story ever. And there's a big story that goes with it that I won't tell you right now. But uh, it goes seven cock rings later. <laughs> she kissed me. That's it. Seven cock rings later. And uh, for me, that's what epitomizes what flash fiction is. Yeah. Um, it's, I think you, you have to use the tools of implication and ambiguity to make a smaller amount of space stretch out to be a bigger space. Um, and one of the ways we can do that is by putting together these unfamiliar things and having, you know, this uh, counterintuitive world, right? And what part, one possible universe could there be seven cock rings before a kiss? And that's what makes a story. It implies a story. So yeah, yeah. The, the gray area is an amazing thing. Maybe we should talk about that because yeah. that space. you got to get rid of the exposition as much as possible and try to hone in. Mm -hmm. And you, your reader really needs to work a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A lot, you more. know, because you they they create the backstory. They right. create what happens in the future. Mm -hmm. They're creating everything in between, and you're trying to give them a full story, but they're. There are those spaces that they have to jump, mm -hmm. and they've got to get yep. there with their own imagination, and that's what I love about mm -hmm. Flash. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, one of the founders of Pixar Studios, his name is Andrew Stanton, and he calls it the unifying theory of two plus two. And what it means is that you always want to give them the two and the two and never the four. And it's basically a fancy way of saying show don't tell. Yeah. Right. I love yeah. that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. The two plus two. So in my classes, two. students are always doing that to each other in the workshops, where they're like. You know, you're giving me you're too giving many, me you're giving me a four here. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, you're giving me so many fractions, I can't yeah. do the math. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun that comes from. Yeah, that, that is so that. great. Yeah. Um, and what books do you use for your classes? Like, because like, you have to, everyone's teaching. Mm -hmm. You're teaching a workshop. You want to talk about your workshop that you're? Uh, yeah, I just started doing a workshop back in, um, I guess it was, it's been several months, I guess January, I ran a beta test of the workshop and I just let the people, I just said, who wants to take a, a, a flash fiction course for free? And I quickly got, you know, like 10 people and and, <laughs> and did it and, and it was such a blast. Mm -hmm. It was just, it's, it's meant to be generative, not prescriptive. It's, you know, put out whatever you can. You have 24 hours post and I only allow people to give positive feedback. Mm -hmm. And then that's over. Next exercise, let's try this. And um, the exercises are very open-ended and free-floating and uh, mm -hmm. the things that people are writing for that are just blowing me away. Wow. I'm just so amazed by what I'm seeing. And so, um, Is it books, people in Denver or are you doing it online? No, I'm doing it online and I just say, you know, I just put it up and and I have a cap of 10 participants, and mm -hmm. uh, it just seems to be, it fills up every time. I I've believe got a wait that. And it's, Sounds it's, amazing. It's fun as hell. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. I, I like want to ask you about that, uh, the positive, uh, only positive feedback, because I actually yeah. recently started forcing my students to say at least they have to do a positive sandwich, and so they yes. have to at least say one thing positive. Then something constructive, just yep. anything that yep. could possibly strengthen it, and yep. then something else positive. And I say it's because you know the whole goal here is intro to writing class, and we're just trying to get people to right. you know get some confidence, yeah. and right. and it's so much more important to get them yes. writing than to critique them to hell and, and scare them away. Right. Yeah. Um, well, what I've had people tell me actually after they've been in the class a few days, they'll go. You know, I wasn't quite so sure about this whole positive only mm -hmm. thing. I was just kind of rolling my eyes. And I thought, uh, but actually, it, it just helps if you're in a generative um, environment where you have to write something every day. If 
people are more able to yeah, write something absolutely. every day when yeah. they feel like they're not being judged or they're yeah. not being, oh, I didn't like, know yeah. that all my mm -hmm. descriptions did this, or I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, and so they're, they're totally out of that mindset mm -hmm. for the two yeah. weeks. And the end of the two weeks, like the last couple of days, I'm like, okay, this is all wonderful, but don't send this stuff out right now. <laughs> and then I give a very long article about, about yeah, drafts yeah. and Sitting. editing and let it sit. It's beautiful, it is wonderful, but it's still a shitty send, first draft. It's still a shitty first draft. <laughs> you know, go back and do all this, but the the whole like goal of the class is to generate a lot of exactly. new stuff. Exactly, mm exactly. -hmm. So, and I think they are more able to do that in that environment. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. For some more. reason, I don't. You know, I have mine workshop, so I take you know, I call it constructive criticism. Yeah. So I say, what I want you to do is, the first thing I want you to do is pick out from somebody's story. So I put them into groups of four, and they all have to give each other their, they have to read their work out loud to everybody in the group, right? Because right, yeah. yours is a live, your live yeah. class, right? Yeah, it's a class at the community college in Santa Fe. And then the next thing they do is they write all the things that they love that really worked in the story for mm -hmm. them. Okay. Then I want them to say, go around and the person doesn't talk who wrote it they just write notes from for as each person tells them without right. giving any fee feedback right. or any questions right what it is they thought was confusing or didn't feel like it was quite there for them and then i said you have to you have to keep your core right there are places that we there are parts that we really believe are important to the story that you got to mm -hmm. hold on to and you've got to mm -hmm. find what that is i think and then the other right. side, and then they we, we just workshop two stories through um, eight weeks. That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we just do, and then they send it out for publication. I give them six places to send to. Wow. That's excellent. That's some fantastic. send it out, some don't. You know, it's, yeah. it's optional. Yeah. I don't force people to send anything right. out, that's for sure. Right, right. But if I think it's really good, I I do. Of, <laughs> I make all my students submit to at least one place by the end of the semester. And I, I don't care. A, I think you it's don't a have cool to get thing. I know. No, I know. Just, just to get a feeling. Experience. Yeah, right. exactly. Just right. so they know. It's important. They have to get a submittable account. And, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, just that. That's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So. And how about you? Talk about the Nano. Flash Nano. Flash Nano. Yeah, so we're in November, so it's Flash Nano. I'm not sure when this will air. It probably won't be November anymore. But um, so every year for four years now, I've done Flash Nano. So it's it's in uh, solidarity with the Nano Rimo novel writers out there. And um, it really came about for me because I didn't want to write a novel in November. I, I've done that a couple of times, and it's a great experience. It's also very generative. You can't edit and all of that. Um, but I'm, I was in flash fiction mode and I knew I couldn't switch. So um, I decided to do a story a day and I put prompts out there, but I don't care if people use prompts and I don't care how they get to a story a day, get to 30 stories at, at the end. Most people will like kind of wait for the prompt and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's the fourth year and there's probably four or 500 people doing it. I'm not really sure how many because awesome. they don't have to sign That's up. Awesome. So, yeah. But people are telling me, oh, this is the fourth year I've done it. I you know? see, and, yeah, I see it mentioned so, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very it's fun. Cool. Yeah, it fun. so it's kind of my, like, because I do a lot of workshops and it's kind of my freebie, you know? It's like, this is, this is like, let's have fun. Yeah, let's write a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I don't, it's not about that, you know? Um, and I'll have edit your flash fiction workshop next year, you know, but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's a fun way to kind of just get in there and be bad at writing again, you know, cause I yeah. think especially when we've been writing for a while, you know, you get like, oh, it's going to be good. And, uh -huh. and it's, it's good to kind of like, oh, it can be bad too. Just let it lose. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Just get it out on the yeah. page. Yeah. The beginner's mind yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I love it. It's fun. Cool. It's actually harder than you think, though, because I wake up and I'm like, oh, oh my god, and today's prompt is, and then I go, yeah, put it, I see put it, people put it on Twitter going, going, okay, it's num, it's day six, <laughs> 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 it's day what's <laughs> seventeen, what's yeah. today's. Um, write a story that takes place while it's snowing, because it was snowing. Oh, when I woke yeah. up, that's so. a perfect. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And my little ten year old son will come in and be like, I think you should write a prompt about Bob the Builder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I turned that into like write about a childhood toy. <laughs> so, nice. Bob the Builder. Mm -hmm. He's great. Mm -hmm. And Carla, so your class, you're teaching all kinds of stuff. We've got existential literature and creative writing and nice. um, but one of the things that I've been really getting into in my classes lately 
is making them, um, so first the first shitty draft, you know, shitty first draft, get it out, no judgment, whatever you have. And then trying to make them identify in a single sentence what the function of the piece is. And what I mean by function is like popular mechanics, Raymond Carver, you know, I think the function is to leave us with this creepy, tragic feeling, you know, that's like just- what happened to the child. Yeah, but like ripped, yeah. you know, ripped apart with this, this completely horrific ambiguity. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it could be like an emotion that I want them, that you want them to leave with. It could be a memory. It could be like pondering what happens next. It could be feeling good. It could be, you know, any number of things. It could be, I, I love this character, or this character is yeah, free or, or whatever it is, but discover the function oh. and then go back through and try to do anything you can to, like any diction that you can change that will help to heighten the engagement with that function mm -hmm. and you know anything that's possibly distracting away a useless character or, you know um, mm -hmm. lines that go the on too long. The last sentence is omniscient narrator. The yeah. whole thing is mm -hmm. like dialogue Ooh, and then it yeah. moves into the last, do you remember the last sentence? The opening is omniscient. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, mm -hmm. how'd it go? Um, and then at that point in this manner it was in this decided. Manner, oh, yeah. oh was the decided. last sentence is this. Mm -hmm. No, so, uh, so they're fighting over the baby and she's mm -hmm. pulling back and then it says um, so he, it, you know, she felt this baby going from her, so she pulled back very hard. Um, but he, you know, at that moment, he caught its other wrist, and he pulled back very hard. In this manner, the issue was decided. I mean, what an yeah. ending! I know, well, I know. And so, again, whatever, whatever it is, and I tell my students if there's any kind of math formula to writing at all, it's I draw an arrow up, so up with engagement and down with distraction. And that's it. That's my formula. Nice. And, uh, and then, so it's it's interesting trying to get them to put on the lens of like looking at a story after the shitty first draft mm -hmm. to try to identify what the function is. I mean, right. it's been it's been something I've been exploring, mm -hmm. and I think that's it's really been helpful. And it's been helpful for me too. And like the story I was writing for today's reading, uh, tonight's reading, I uh, my problem was like as I'm writing it, a billion things are happening in my head, and I'm. Trying to be like, okay, but that's not the I'll function. Skip. I'm, like, I'm skipping steps here because I don't have very much time because I got to get on a fucking panel. So. <laughs> I know how that goes. It's like when you've got a deadline. I kind of love deadlines because yeah. if I didn't have deadlines, I'd still be in bed. I mean, yeah. seriously. Yeah. But I mean, deadlines are really good for me, and yes. that's why I like that, like the nano mm -hmm. and the thing where there's some, you know, like I had to do a thing for CCA in Santa Fe this. Um, contemporary at this art gallery a reading for Halloween and you had to write a spooky story or, and uh, it's came the day of and I'm gonna MC this thing and I'm like I got nothing uh -huh. and so I had this really weird book on the weirdest deaths imaginable oh. in history so I just started to look through it but I came up my first sentence I'm gonna read it tonight so oh, good oh good because um, we're all going to be tonight reading we're at the F bomb. At the F -bomb. Here we are in Denver for the F bomb yeah. tonight. It's the flash fiction series of Denver. Yes, <laughs> and it rocks. 